And all right, I done up and done it, and I bought the Ninja Foodi Smart XL Pro oven, the one with the thermometer. And that is because I knew I'd never be satisfied without the top of the line. I mean, I've got some ideas for this one, but uh, this one has changed my kitchen setup completely. I mean, I've got eight or nine videos up on it and everything from a whole turkey to a prime rib, a 12 and a half pound ham. It is a game changer when it comes to air frying, I guarantee it. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try and show the differences in all three models. Right there's the one I call the Walmart model. And then here's the one I've had and here's the smart. I'm gonna go over all the differences so you can decide which one you think you need. I'm John Sanders, also known as Jelly007. Let's uh, see what how these compare. Okay, I wanted to go over a couple of things before I pull these these decals off to uh, to cover some things I may have missed when I did the uh, unboxing on this device. But the my point is this right here is what they refer to as the DT two hundred. And that is the Walmart version, and it is $199. Okay, I bought this one, which is referred to as the DT201. At I bought it off of Ninja's website, and I paid $279. Of course, all of this is plus tax, but $279 for that one right there. And this one I bought on Amazon. I think it's a Ninja outlet on Amazon. I'm really, I'm not positive about that, but it came from Amazon. That's my point. And it's in a, by the way, it came in this cardboard box where this one, when I bought it from Ninja, came in the box with it on top here. If you, I don't know if you can see it, but has the artwork and all on it. But my point is, this one came from Amazon. I paid $2.99 plus tax. Now, the thing I want to say right quick, and then I'm going to get all this off so I can turn them on and we can see the display and I can show you the differences uh, on what the features are. But right here's something. Before first use, we recommend placing all accessories inside the oven, running it on air roast at 450 degrees for 20 minutes without adding food. This removes any residues. Now it just says it recommends it. It's not an it's something it's not something you have to do, but it is something that I missed and that honestly all air fryers are a lot of them say it it's just a lot of people don't do it but you know what it's not a bad idea it does cure the product as some people have pointed out to me and that, that's not a bad thing but you can see i got to get all this off and then i am going to rinse them and dry them real well and then put them in here and do that step but then we'll go over the features but i did want to cover that uh there's one other thing and, and that i missed on the first one and is about this thing in the back which is I uh, can't show you till I get those racks out, but it is a uh, it's a splatter shield that you have to remove and clean. But it also recommends this right here, and you can freeze that and uh, or do a screenshot and read that if you need to. But it, once it gets dirty, uh, you boil it. But I'm gonna say this: I've probably cooked 20 times in this one, and I, all I've done to it is put it in the sink with warm water and soap. I have not had to do this method, which is boiling it. It's, it's, it's not been a problem, and I have cleaned it, but nothing drastic. So I'm about to pull all of this off. If you want to get a screenshot of that, please do. You can read it, and they might explain something there that I'm going to miss, and that's another thing. That's why I always say, don't go by what I'm saying. I read this manual. So about to get on these uh, functions. I'll be back. I've already rinsed those off and dried them off real well. There it is turned on for the first time. Uh, whole roast. We need to go up on temp to 450 degrees. We are there. We're going to take the time down to 20 minutes. And, uh, whoops, whoops. I went way past what I should. <laughs> but there you go. Start and stop. We are running at 450. When that time's out 20, in 20 minutes, we'll let that stuff cool off and uh, we'll start our next test. Okay, in case you're not familiar with the oven, it, it boasts or talks about a 90 second preheat and you can see it's flashing preheat right there. And, uh, but the thing is it, it usually does, in fact, there it goes and that's probably been close to 90 seconds. Uh, it talks about a preheat, but what I'm saying is it's not, it is preheating, don't get me wrong, 
but it's not at 450 degrees. I've checked it on this oven, and uh, I think what it means is it does preheat the oven, but it doesn't do, it's not going to take it all the way to 450. So I just wanted you to know that. Let this get done, run that 20 minutes, and then we're going to go over the features. So be back. All right, it has ended, and that's how it displays that. Now, one thing I want to say, and something I haven't stressed, is that it does get hot. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I mean, all toaster ovens I've ever had, they get hot on the top. Well, it gets fairly hot on the sides. And from what I read on the manual in that one is that it wants one inch clearance all the way around. And that's really all it asked for. But you don't want to put your hand there. It, it, it is hot. I will put it like that. Now, the thing with this one is the only thing I, well, maybe I'm wrong, but I cannot find a place to store this, but it is a magnet. So you could put it on the side, you know, any, any side you want. And, uh, Although it's warm and the, the top and sides do get warm, I left it right there the whole time that uh, it was running. And uh, although it's hot, it's not hurt, is my point. So, <clears throat> what I want to do is go over the, the functions that each one has or doesn't have. And then I've got a couple of things you might want to consider uh, if you don't, you know, if you want to save some money. And, and you don't want to buy the $2.99 one. So I'm going to kind of get a few items out that I think will help you with that. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I want to show right quick the functions. And here is the top dog, the uh, DT251. And it has 10 selections, 10 functions. And you can see them. Whole roast, air roast, air fry, bake, dehydrate, broil, toast, bagel, pizza, and reheat. And on the DT201, same thing. It's identical. The only thing, the, the things that are different are these buttons right here. Uh, there's the 201, of course. And here is the Smart, which has these buttons right here, these additional buttons right here. Now, here is the Walmart version, and I can't really get a good uh, look at the buttons. Obviously, I don't own one, so I'm having to go by their pictures. But... Uh, let's see, uh, right there's the eight functions, and it, it says it, eight functions to elevate your cooking. Whole roast, air fry, air roast, bake, broil, toast, bagel, and pizza, which means it is missing dehydrate and reheat. So that's pretty much the gist of that. So now you know. All right, I'm going to kind of make this segment kind of short and sweet, but here's old Trusty, I call it. I've had him for years. It's iGrill. They're actually made by Weber now, I think. Uh, I don't even know how much this particular model is. It'll do up to four probes, and you put uh, uh, all the probes in, all four up to, and you can do what you want to with it, and it's Bluetooth. It'll connect to your phone, but it has a wire. So it's a thermometer, just like this is. Of course, it won't shut the unit off. It, there's a couple of things it won't do, but it will display the temp of, of whatever's in your oven uh, four different ways, and it's, it will connect to your phone. This right here is probably my favorite unit for that type stuff, and this is a meter, uh, and that's, that's what you have to search for, meter, M-E-A-T-E-R, uh, it's not the only device like this on the market. It, it is the one I have, and it and I have the meter block, and it has four different probes that you can put in uh, either different devices. And not only that, but it reads, uh, like if you have it in, say, a turkey, it reads the meat or the internal read right here, and it reads the ambient or the out or the oven temperature from this black end. So, and... It's Wi-Fi, so you can read it anywhere in the, <laughs> anywhere you can get a, a, a connection. Uh, if you, anywhere in the world that you can get to your phone, you can see what the temp is in your oven or your green egg is what I bought it for or any device you have uh, that you're using it in. It's a real neat device. It's not the cheapest thing on the planet, of course, and uh, I, I want to say this is like $100, but I don't even remember what this costs. But they also make this in one that's only one 
probe, so a lot cheaper than <clears throat> what this meter block is. And there's another company that makes something similar. I've never tried, but this is the one I bought and I like it. This, this right here though, in fact, in fact, I'm gonna get my act together a little bit better and show you how the probe works and uh, show you how it displays. So let me get that, let me get my act together and I'll be back. Okay, so as far as the probe, here it is. It looks a lot like the one that comes with the grill. I, mean, I don't know what would interchange, and I'm not saying it, it would, but you see it says insert right here. There's a little plug for it in the handle that you insert it. And then you have two buttons. One is, uh, I gotta get where I can see it. One is manual. And in manual mode, you can run the temp all the way, let's go as high as it'll go, which is 200 degrees, which would, uh, in other words, it, it will shut off the oven at whatever you set this at. The lowest number you'd be able to go to is 100. So you can go from 100 to 200 degrees uh, and as a manual setting to turn it off, turn the oven off. And then if you want to use their presets, you just press this right here, which is preset. And we're on fish, and it's actually set for medium rare, which they're calling 120. And if you want to change that uh, degree of doneness, you press temp. So well is 150, medium well 140, medium 130, medium rare 120, and then back to 150, and that is all on fish. If you want to change the protein you're cooking, you press function. That goes to beef, which is medium is 140, medium well 145, well 155, rare 120, and medium rare 130. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at the rest of them. We'll push function. Chicken, 165, and it doesn't matter what you do at that point because it's, that's the only option you get on chicken is 165. We'll press function for pork. Medium is 140. Uh, medium well 150, well 160, medium rare 130, and back to medium. And again, it cuts the oven off at that point. Now that doesn't mean, in my opinion, you can just leave it in there. You still got to come pull it out because obviously the oven's still hot, so you'd want to get it out and let it rest. All right, so in conclusion, I want to say this device right here is probably the best bang for your buck across the board. As far as air fryers, I don't think there's ever been anything that would touch it. Here's one of the reasons. It does something I've always wanted with air fryers. It controls the fan. It doesn't just control the heat. It, and it does it uh, really well. It's not like some I've seen that say they do it and they kind of don't. But like I did, uh, I've done some, uh, I did Cinnabons in it. And, uh, but what I'm getting at is when you do bake, it turns a fan really low. There's there's actually uh, uh, settings that don't even run the fan, just like a toaster oven. So if you ask me, it is by far the best thing that's on the market uh, for, if you want to call it the toaster oven, a countertop oven, an air fryer, whatever you want to call it, I love it. That, that's, my, that's my opinion and uh, nobody's paying me. As always, I've said a million times, uh, I'm not affiliated, nobody's paying me. <laughs> It is just my honest opinion. I love the thing. It's just a really, really, really good device. The fan design in here is absolutely, uh, it, it, it's really nice. If you watch the one where I compare it to my Breville and I do wings in it and I have a Breville oven, an air frying oven, and you'll see where oil gets all over the, the glass on the Breville. It does it in here, and it's something they're doing with this fan. Uh, the fan design is uh, it's brilliant. I've said it before. I'll say it again. And uh, you can get it as cheap as $1.99, again, without the uh, dehydrate or reheat feature. And I'm not really sure what highs and lows of temps this will do. Maybe somebody can put that in the comments. I'd love to know what the lowest temp this one will do. So you could might could, uh, you know, hack the reheat feature but anyhow hey i love y'all all where's my thumb here it is if y'all learned anything in this video i sure would appreciate a thumbs up it means a bunch and and i do appreciate it when everybody does it i love this oven i really do and i think you will too and i wouldn't be saying that if i didn't think you would so 
I love you all. Come back to see me. Bye-bye.